the Bolin Bend. Or two Bolins, as mentioned in Ashley's Book of Knots, number 1455. However, for your entertainment today, there is also the enhanced Bolin Bend. And I spotted this one a little while ago. Oh, sorry. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. And yes, so anyway, this one is in Ashley's Book of Knots. As I said, it's number 1455. And this one is not in Ashley's Book of Knots, but I did spot it somewhere else. And it is exactly the same as the one above it, except it's tied slightly different at this point. And what I'm going to do is I will show you in the video why this one could be more preferable to the one above. But like in all of them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to tie both of them. So anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to do the bowling bend and the enhanced bowling bend or the two bowlings, whichever you want to call it. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on and let's get knotting. Right, so here's our two ropes that we want to join together. And in the days of old, the bowling bend was actually used for joining two lightweight hawsers together. So the first thing that we're going to do is discard one rope. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie a bowling into this. And yes, I know there are many different ways of tying a bowling. And if you want to see different ways, just look at the description down below and I'll, there's a video link to that. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a tabletop method here of tying it via the Marlin spike hitch. So I'm going to, there's my working end. And the first thing I'm going to do is just give myself a little bit of cordage. And in my working end now, I'm going to put it between my thumb and finger and just roll the rope so that I form a loop to the left hand side of my hand there. Once I've done that, I then form, just roll it again and just fold it over. So what you're doing is getting that loop and folding it over the actual standing end. So we've got a loop over the top of our standing end. Now that I've done that, I'm just gonna, oh, and just so you're looking there, you're looking for a pretzel shape, or for those of you more familiar with it, the Marlin Spike Hitch as such. The next thing I'm gonna do is just dive down there, so where the loop is, dive down in the loop and pull through a little bit of my working end so that I've pulled through a little bit of a loop at that point there. And then the next thing I'm going to do, let's just make that a little bit more enhanced for you. So there's my loop sticking up, coming out through. And the next thing I'm gonna do is take my working end and I'm gonna pass it around the back of this loop that I've just created here, pass it through that loop, bring it down, and then where I've brought it down here, I've got another loop running at the bottom here. All I'm going to do now is hold on to the working end and the right hand side of that loop there and just gently pull. And you will see now here that as I turn it over, we now have one in number, the familiar bowling loop or the bowling tied in the end of our line here. So anyway, that's the first half done. And so to do the second half is just very, very simple. And if we use the same method again, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put my first bowling out of the way and let's get some of my working end through and then tie the second bowling. So I'm going to roll it over like I did before. So we end up with a loop. Then just gently take that again and roll it over and then where we've rolled it over, we've got our pretzel shape or the marlin spike hitch as such. Pull a little bit of the working end, so down, go down there into the loop, pull a little bit of my working end through, and there we have it. We now have a bit of the working end coming through. And there is my working end itself. Sorry, that was the standing end. Just pulled a bit of the standing end through, and there's my working end going off in that direction. Right. Now, to finish this, the next thing I'm going to do is bring my other bowling into play. And then when I bring my bowling into play, I'm going to pass the working end of my yellow one through the loop of the bowling there, pass it around, and then I'm going to once again 
To tie the bowline into the yellow one, all I'm going to do now is take the working end here, pass it around the back of that loop that we created a little bit earlier. So pass it around the back of that loop. And then once it's gone round the back of that loop, just gently pull on the working end and the upper side of this one here. Just pull on that and you'll see now here it falls into place and we've now got our second bowling. So you can see here now, there's one bowling. And then if I just turn it over, it's easier to recognise if you recognise your bowlings. And now it can be just dressed up smartly. If you can make these loops as big as or as small as you want, I've had to make them relatively small simply for the fact is I'm constrained by my studio here as such. And then as we pull up on this, you can see here now that as I pull up, the bowling, the actual knot of the bowlings themselves is just becoming tighter. And if you've got a bigger bowling, you can use the Yosemite tie off, the ampersand tie off, whatever method you want to do to secure your bowling even more. But now this is where the issue comes in. When you've got a regular bowling bend like this, one problem you have is that where these two are meeting here, if, say, for example, you're on a vessel and it's constantly moving, you can see by the constant, this sort of movement here would gradually wear both the ropes where they meet at this point. It would wear quite a bit more. And so this is where I came across the enhanced version. And this is the enhanced version. And you can see how here, in the middle there, there is no way of it actually rocking and wearing. Um, the only thing I would suggest is if you're going to use this for heavy loads, just check the strength of these knots as such. So anyway, let's get on now and, and tie the enhanced bowling bend. Okay, so here we've got it. I've now, I've tied a bowling in my yellow cordage here and it's ready to receive the enhanced bowling bend. So first of all, what I'm going to do is just put that out of the way and just show you one more time how I tie this particular bowling. And so here we go. My working end is going off to the right hand side there and I'm taking a little bit through, a little bit extra this time. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a loop in this. So just twist it between my thumb and finger. And there we go. We've now got a loop appear at that point there. Then once again, twist it again. So we end up with our pretzel shape at that point. And then when we've got our pretzel shape at this point here, just pull a little bit through. And there we go. We've now pulled a loop through that pretzel shape at that point. Right, so now that I've done that, the next thing I can do now is get hold of my other bowling. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to lay it out in front of me. And then what I'm going to do now is pass my red cordage up through the bowling and then bring it around. So it's coming up through going around the back on the outside of the yellow one, underneath both on the yellow one. And I'm going to need to pull a bit more cordage through on this. And then now that I've done that, I then bring it, oh, so it's going over the yellow, under both. Then I'm going to bring it around over the yellow and then follow the original red one down at that point. And then when I've done that, Next thing I want to do is pull through a little bit more and then gradually pull it up nice and tight. And you can see now here we've pulled it up nice and tight and there's no way now that if this is actually rocking that these two at this point here is going to wear. And then the next thing I do is here's my loop that I created earlier. There's my working end. I'm going to pass my working end around the back of that loop through the loop there and then pull it through and then gently pull on the right hand side of that red one and the working end itself just pull it through it collapses onto itself dress it up smartly and you can see now here that as I dress it up we now have 
the bowling tied on this side and it just wants dressing up slightly at this point here because it's just needs a little bit dressing up and it's easily dressed up you can just slacken this off it's so easy to break and slacken it and there we go we now have just dress that up as well we've got a bowling there and we've got a bowling on this side here and there's no way that those two are going to actually rock and wear the rope itself so there you have it that is the bowling bend this one could probably be dressed up a little bit better let's just dress it up a bit better there we go and as you can see there we've got our working ends are in the middle on each one and this can also be done with the cowboy bowling as well you know if you want your working ends coming out on the outside just tie the cowboy bowling works just as well and you can see now here our two ropes are joined using the bowling bend so anyway once again thanks very much for watching and i'll see you all again next time do leave me deck comments down below and let's have a bit of banter in the comment section and once again if you want to see more videos click check the description below check my comment or what click on one of these links and you'll see more so once again thanks for watching bye bye